Good day, and welcome to the Simone Zone One with your host, John C. Mejia. Did you know the power of positive change is within your own imagination? Join us for the next hour as we explore the power of your creativity, inspiration, and imagination. Now, here's John. Welcome to today's show. We're here every Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on Voice America's 7th Wave Channel. I'm your host, John Mejia, and today's program is part two of my interview with the creator of The Mace Method and author of Don't Think of an Elephant, John Mace. If you missed part one of this interview, you can hear it by going to our show archives. As you listen to this program, consider John's explanation of the theory behind his work. The mind does not create identities. They are created by you. All the mind does is create a mental image to represent a concept. And identities are concepts. All identities are the result of two energy flows opposing one another. As mountains are made by the mass of tectonic plates, so it is with negative identities. They contain all of the negative energy in the upset. So now join me as John Mace continues demonstrating his revolutionary process on me. Now, to carry on with your, this session for you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep asking these questions until there's no more answers. But now that you know how this works, I'm going to take a shortcut. Okay. Okay, in handling them. As long as you understand the mechanics of all this. I do. So close your eyes again, please. Good. Okay. Now, apart from your stepfather, in your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Snap answer, what it was it? Probably my father. Your own father, is it? Yes. Good. Now, with your eyes still closed, just think about your father. How do you now feel when you think about your father? I want it's to say, negative. what is it? Perplexed with anger, if, if I could put it that uh, way. It, 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 you know, which is the predominant feeling, perplexed or angry? You know, it's disappointed. What? It's disappointed is really ah, what it is. Now, that's the point. Disappointed is the word, right? Yes. Good. Now, just think what the word disappointed means, and you get an image, and when you've got the image, tell me. Yes. Good. Now, focus on it. When it stops growing, let me know. It stopped growing. Good. Now, keep watching it. It's going to shrink and disappear like the others, and when it's gone completely, tell me. It's gone. Good. Open your eyes, please. As I said, you are handing this remarkably well. So, just think about your father now. How do you feel? No feeling. I just am present. Good. That relationship has changed. And I'll give you an example of what happens in here. A lady yeah. who um, uh, I'm training, on one week she said, I've got to go to a family reunion at the end of the week. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the rest of the family. So she came back the next week and she said, John, I've got to tell you this. I, 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 I've just got to tell you, it's amazing. She said, I went to a family reunion and I was there before mum. Then mum walked in didn't say a word, just walked up to me and put her arms around me. Now, John, you may say, well, so what? But the so what is this. I cannot remember the last time my mother put her arms around me. And your point here is, is that when you change these negative identities that have been binding us to certain knee-jerk reactions, the world around us changes. Precisely. So you are responsible for everything that happens to you. In the, my session of the person I trained, we did not discuss her mother. We didn't handle her mother. Mm -hmm. We did just what I've done with you, her attitude towards her mother. And nothing was said. But, uh, and she has not spoken to her mother since she went to the, the family reunion. But the mother picked up her flows, her vibes, and she changed. And you've hit the nail on the head. What you flow out there creates what happens to you. I want to say that many people do not want to hear this message because it speaks to personal responsibility. <laughs> well, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that is something they've got to confront because you are they <laughs> responsible for everything that happens to them. And that's always about it. And, and, I, and I agree with you. And, and so I think that this is a very important point that we have created certain conditions that we, we now say we don't like, and yet we continue to perpetuate them. 
precisely, and they are of our own making. And therefore they can be of our own unmaking. Of course they can. Well, okay, well, let's get on with what we're doing with you. Now, yes. close your eyes again, please. If they're closed. Here's the question again. Apart from what we've handled, in your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Snap answer? Me. Okay, now just think what the word me means and you get an image. Me. When you get the image, tell me. I have it. Good. Now just focus on it. When it stops growing, tell me. It stopped growing. Good. So keep focusing on it and when it's gone like the others, let me know. Gone completely, let me know. It's gone. Good. Open your eyes, please. How do you now feel about yourself? Aha. Don't be sure. How do you feel? I want to say good, well, uh, happy, I suppose. Well, that's right. That's changed. All that crap is gone. Now, I'm going to keep asking that question until there's no more answers. So close your eyes again, please. Yes. Apart from what we've handled in your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Snap answer or not? Yes. Okay. So what have you thought about? A person, a group, an organization or what? No, basically a mindset of my own. Okay. When you think about that, how does it make you feel? I'd say probably sad. Sad. S-A-D? Yes. Okay. Now just think with the eyes closed, just think what the word sad means and you get a picture. Sad. When you've got the image, tell me. I have it. Good. Focus on it. When it stops growing, let me know. Stop. Good. So keep watching it, and when it's gone like the others, let me know. It is gone. Good. Open your eyes, please. Do you still feel sad? No, I don't. And I wanted to say here, I, this is very interesting, because what this, the, the sensation that I'm getting is that we're bringing forth mind forms, almost like balloons, if I could give it an image, yeah. and this balloon expands, and then it's almost like pricking the balloon so that all that's left is the air... You know, there's no difference between the air in a balloon and outside of the balloon. And when you prick this skin, which is this negative identity, what you're left with is just an equalized state. You're quite correct. You see, everyone has their own words to describe this. Of course. But let me say this to you. As I said to you a minute ago, you are handling this very, very well. There's nothing to say that these identities will take a minute to go or five minutes to go. Or whether you just prick them, they just go like that. Each of us is our own, is an individual, and we take our own time to do these things. You handle it extremely well. But not everybody would handle it extremely well as that. They might take a minute to get rid of it. But hey, what's a minute now? <laughs> well, it's, you know, this is, there's a couple of things that come to mind. First of all, I want to say to the listeners that what's fascinating about this work is that, unlike others, you don't have to go and dig into the specifics of the experience that you are concerned about or have, have, are impinged by. And for many people, that's a big thing because they don't want to go into the details of something negative that occurred 10, 20, 30 years ago. You can bypass that with this particular methodology, which is wonderful. Yeah, I mean, see, but this is a major aspect of it. It is it's totally devoid of self-disclosure. Look, I don't know anything about you, except you had an upset on a bus, that's all I know. Right. Why it was up, well, I couldn't, I don't know, I don't care, I couldn't care less. It's right. totally devoid of self-disclosure. And this is where it's such a complete departure to conventional counseling, conventional psychiatric problem, Okay. The difference is light speed to riding on a donkey in terms of therapeutic models. Yes, look, let me say this to you um, before we go on. I've had like a person, this is not just once, but many people have come to me. And other practitioners who I've trained, don't forget, not, not just me, they say, oh, look, I've been going to a psychiatrist for five years. Once a week, I go for medication and, and treatment. Now, it costs a fortune, just think about it. Right. One session with me, and I never have to go near that psychiatrist or that psychologist again. The difference is, again, to the listening audience, in today's world, if you want to get information on any subject, what do you do? You go to the Internet, you go to Google, and you type in a phrase, and instantaneously you have an answer. 
And the analogy that I want to make is that this type of work, which is not quite energy psychology, I understand that there's a, a difference between what you do and what other people call energy psychology, but the similarity is, is that the speed at which you get the data that you want is similar to doing an internet search. It is literally instantaneous. That, uh, look, uh, look, you really understand this, and it's a pleasure to work with you. Okay, Thank that's Thank you. That's so very you kind. Do, yeah, well, it's, it's the truth of the matter. You do understand it. Anyhow, look, I'd like to continue to, to, to finish you off completely. Let's do it. Now, close your eyes again, please. Good. They are closed. Here's this question again. In your entire life, apart from what we've handled, who or what has most adversely affected you? Hmm. Okay, I have an image. Got an image? Oh, you've got an yeah. image, have you? I have, a, I have a person, I should say. Yeah, okay, that's okay. You've got that image. Now, focus on it. When yeah. it stops growing, tell me. It's, it's stopped growing. Good. Now, keep watching it. When it's gone completely, tell me. It's gone. Good. Okay, now open your eyes, please. Just think about that person. How do you now feel? Fine. Good. It's gone. All right. So, close your eyes again, please. I'll keep asking this question until there's no more answers. Mm -hmm. Apart from what we've handled, in your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Snap answer? Yes. Is it a person, a group, or an organization? What is it? It's a person. Good. Now, that person, when you think about them, how do you feel? Diminished. Okay, just think what the word diminished means, and you get an image. Diminished. When you get the image, tell me. I have the image. Good. Now keep focusing on it. When it's gone completely, tell me. Yes, it's gone. Gone, great. Now, you think about that person. How do you feel? Nothing this, there. You're totally indifferent now. Yes. All right, so close your eyes. We'll continue until there's no answers. Uh, and ultimately, there's going to be no answers. You understand that? I do. I, and I, in fact, I see the light at the end of the tunnel here. Great. So, eyes closed. Here's the question again. Apart from what we've handled in your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? I got it. Good. Person, group, organization, or what? Person. Good. Just think about that person. How does it make you feel? Mad. Okay, just think what the word mad means when you get an image. When you get the image, tell me. I have the image. Good, focus on it. When it's gone completely, tell me. It's gone completely. Good, good. Open your eyes, please. Just think about that person. How do you now feel? I feel positive feelings, but more indifferent than anything. Good, and that's the point. My sense of the MACE method is that negative images are like balloons that we can blow up and with our awareness, prick to make them disappear. According to John, clearing all negative images is all that is needed to reveal the real you, a perfect unit of energy. The fact that no self-disclosure is required for this work, according to John, using his method, you can change how the past affects you now. This concept is also held by other energy psychology schools, including the Simone Zone. The difference is in the methodology, but the intent and the end goal is the same the reclaiming of ourselves so that we can lead a happier and more fulfilled life. In this segment, John focuses on issues of finances and learning, two huge areas of concern for most people. All right. Close your eyes again, please. Apart from what we've just handled, in your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Got an answer? I do. Okay. What is it, a person, group, or organization, or what is it? The person. Good. So just think about that person. How does it make you feel? Angry. Angry. All right. Just think of the word angry means and you get an image. When you've got the image, Tom. I have it. Good. Focus on it. When it stops growing, let me know. Stops growing. Good. Now just keep focusing on it. When it's gone completely, tell me. It's gone. Good. The image is gone. That identity is gone. Just think about that person. How do you now feel? I feel fine. In, in Good. That's it. Yes. So, I'll ask the question again. Apart from what we just handled, in your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Want a snap answer? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. Okay. What are you looking at? Person, group, or what? A person. Okay. So, when you think about this person, what is the feeling, the feeling, when you think about that person? I would say rage. 
rage. All right, just think what the word rage means, and you get an image, rage. Yes. Good, focus on it when it stops growing to me. Okay, done. Okay, now keep watching it. When it's gone completely, let me know. It's gone completely. Good. Open your eyes, please. Just think about that person. How do you now feel? Indifferent. Okay. I'll ask you this question again, apart from what we've handled. In your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Got an answer? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, now I'm going to ask you another question. Concerning life, I want a snap answer. Concerning life, what bugs you the most? Okay. What was, what was the answer? I guess a certain sense of limitation. A sense of limitation. Yes. All right, now just think what this sense of limitation, what, when you think about that, how does it make you feel? Oh, it makes me feel constricted. All right, now just think what the word constricted means, and you get a picture. When you get the picture, tell me. I have a picture. Good. Now just keep focusing on it. When it stops growing, tell me. Okay, stop growing. Good, now keep focusing on it, and when it's gone completely, tell me. It, it's gone completely. Good. So how do you feel about that now, about life now? I, you know, I feel a sense of amazement and just kind of a, well, towards you, I must say, gratitude at, at, at your generosity in, in going through this process with me. It's really quite unexpected and quite remarkable. Okay. I, I, I understand that. Um, and I appreciate your, you know, your comments. But I'm going to ask you this question again now. Mm-hmm. The eyes closed. Yes. In your entire life, who or what has most adversely affected you? Snap answer or no answer? Uh, I, I can't think of any. <laughs> There's nothing to think of. Open your eyes, please. Uh, my eyes are open. Good. Now, you have just scanned your... Uh, you've looked at your life and all these situations, and none of them now are adversely affecting you, correct? That would appear to be the case, yes. That's right. Now, the thing is this. That we have just cleared up a major upset in your life. We've cleaned up all these relationship problems. Now, just to make sure that nothing has been missed, I'm going to do another exercise with you. Okay. Not to invalidate what you've done, is to check that nothing has been missed. Fine. Now, I'm going to get you to look over your life. And naturally enough, you're going to you know, view your life and you'll think of many things that, oh, so what, okay, so what, so what, you know what I mean? But mm. if you think of anything which is negative, I want to know it. I just thought of something. Well, okay, close your eyes, please. Mm -hmm. What have you thought about? Person, uh, or what? Uh, no, it was, actually it was a, uh, an investment that went wrong. Okay, when you think about that investment that went wrong, how do you feel? Foolish. Foolish. All right, just think what the word foolish means, and you get an image. When you get the image, tell me. I, I have an image. Good, now focus on it. When it stops growing, let me know. Okay, it stopped growing. Good. Now keep watching it. When it's gone completely, tell me. It is gone completely. Good. So just think about that investment. How do you now feel? I feel okay about it. I mean, it happened. <laughs> That's okay. right. Now that is the point. You cannot change the past. You cannot unhappen what's happened. But you can change how the past affects you now. You are no longer affected by that event. It's history. Okay? That is amazing. Now, th let me ask you a question. For, from that point forward, when I had this negative experience, let's say, in an investment. Yeah. Uh, every time I've gone forward to try to make another investment, I've always had this trepidation in the pit of my stomach. And I'm curious now if when I go forward to do something from this point forward, if I will be able to do it without that impinging sense of, oh, what if I make a mistake? Okay. Right now, with your eyes closed, just imagine you're going to make an investment and you're writing a check for a lot of money. Right. How do you feel at the thought of writing a check? I feel okay, fine. Good. That's right. You, well, what's happened is what's happened. It's all history. It's gone. 
And the more of these things we get rid of, the more it's a real you, and the real you is rational, and you'll make a rational decision. John, this is an amazing work that you do. Let me ask you this. Do people at the end, when they hit what you call rock bottom or when there's no more images to bring forward that have a negative charge to them, do people ever say to you, John, I feel almost as though I've lost a part of myself and I don't know how to traverse this new ground that's now opened up ahead of me? Okay. You're jumping the gun. Sorry. Let me, let, now, that's okay. So I just want to finish this action, and then I'll, I'll, I'll handle that for you. Okay, very good. So just close your eyes again, please. Yes. Now continue to scan your entire life. Yes. Anything negative popped up, Tommy? I feel pretty good. Good. Now open your eyes, please. Mm-hmm. Now, what this tells me is this. You have just looked over your entire life, and there's nothing that's negative anymore. It's all gone. Yes. So I'll give you a little bit of John Mace philosophy. Please. Life is in you today to make your own tomorrow. Today's decisions create tomorrow for you. Now, you've just looked over your entire life. There's nothing negative anymore. Are you going to make positive or negative decisions about tomorrow? Positive. That's right. The good things are just going to happen. But good means what it means to you. Not what it means to Aunt Martha or Uncle Tom. Good means what it means to you. And the good things are just going to happen. Well, that is a wonderful benediction, I must tell you. I have a question. Go on. In your work, is there a role for positive imagination going forward after you clean out these negative images? That is the real you. That's just natural. The real you makes natural pro-survival decisions. And that's what I'm just pointing out to you. I see. Now, I'm going to do a little exercise with you mm -hmm. before you go any further. Now, close your eyes, please. Okay. Good. Now, as you sit there now, how do you feel? I feel quite good. Good. Now, with your eyes closed, put your attention on the you that's feeling quite good. Not on your body, on you that's feeling good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. You are energy. And energy knows no bounds. You are of unlimited potential. You are of infinite dimension. In other words, there's no limit to how big you can feel. Now, as you sit there now, how big are you starting to feel? I am, uh, well, I'm expansive. Uh, unlimited, okay. frank frankly. Right, now just keep your attention on you. Allow yourself to expand. And there's no limit to how big you can feel. And when you feel you can't expand anymore, leave your eyes closed for Tommy. Just allow yourself to expand. Keep your attention on you. Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, I suppose the word is infinite. And that is quite correct. Now, that is the real you. And keep your eyes closed. See, that a being such as you operate in the, in the high ascetic bands of life. Enthusiastic, honest, loving, happy, productive. That's where you now operate. And that is the real you. Now, when you're happy with that, you sit there till you're happy, and then open your eyes and tell me. Uh, well, I'm thrilled with this, so I can open my eyes now. <laughs> Good. That is the real you. I'll give you my definition of help. My definition of help is to assist someone to find themselves. You have found yourself, and there's no greater gift I can give you than that. Clear all negative identities, and according to John, good things just start to happen. When I asked John about the role of the positive imagination, he quickly stated, that's the real you. To my understanding, this means that who and what we are at our core is only positive imagination with all of the negative imagination, in this case, negative identities, removed once and for all. In my opinion, work of the type done by John Mace and others in the wellness field is essential if we are able to withstand the onslaught of fear-based images and messages that are continually broadcast by the media. Each of us is responsible to do what we can to ensure our individual and collective well-being. In this regard, learning what mentors like John Mace have to share about the way the mind works is akin to learning how to eat a proper diet. John is on a mission to remind us that we are boundless energy, and as such, that we have no limits. 
Any idea of limitation are roles that we have taken on to represent an unhappy or unpleasant experience. The good news of John's work is that, since it is we who created these roles, we have the power to unmake them. Stay tuned to hear how John helps me find and root out my negative identities. Chances are, they are not too different. Simplicity is the power behind all great ideas, the wheel perhaps being the greatest example of all. What makes a search engine like Google powerful is its ease of use, again, simplicity. Similarly, the power of the MACE method is in its simplicity. This can also be said of other energy psychology modalities like EFT, EMDR, and the Simone Zone. And while skeptics will always abound, it is those who dare to explore these tools for themselves who will benefit the most from the advances in this exciting emerging field. With non-invasive techniques like the MACE method becoming available, people no longer can use the excuse of limited time and funds. I must say, you are a wonderful expositor and guide, and you are eloquent, and you, you epitomize the very finest of what we're looking for in, in our program, which is to bring liberation tools, if I can use that somewhat charged word, to the listening audience that they can take advantage of. Because if you can spend an hour with John Mace or one of his practitioners, and it's, you can feel what I'm feeling right now, I know there's no one out there who will not do whatever is necessary to spend an hour or whatever it takes, two hours, five hours, with a practitioner of this work because it truly is remarkable. This program is not to promote anything in particular. We don't charge either for listening or for being a, somebody that we interview on the show. And so we do this because we believe that there are tools of liberation. And John Mace, you are a philosopher in my estimation of the highest order, and your work is absolutely what the world needs right now. I'm glad you recognize that. You see, uh, and this is why at the age of 81, I have no intention of retiring. I'm still working. And what I'm doing is training other people. See, look, it is not me that's doing this. It's the knowledge. And many people whom I've trained can produce and do produce the same result. I can see it. I mean... I don't want to sound disrespectful, but it almost seems too easy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Look, my, that is the most common expression I get. It can't be this easy. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll explain something to you, what I say to people who say that. And it's this. Here's a little exercise. Can you think of a mechanical contrivance more simple than the wheel? No. Because there isn't any. Now try and imagine life without a wheel. Very slow. <laughs> well, where would we be without the wheel? We'd be back in the Stone Age, mm -hmm. where we would not even have a wheelbarrow. We'd have to drag and carry everything. Sure. The wheel is the most monumental discovery in the material universe that's ever been made. And the fact is this. It is so powerful because it is so simple. It gets its power from its simplicity. This research of mine gets its power from its simplicity. That is a beautiful analogy. Your work is to psychology and philosophy what the wheel has been to our modern civilization. I love that. Yeah, well, the thing is this. Is, uh, as long as you recognize it, it's the, it's the, it is the work, not me. Now, I'm going to say something to you. Many people have said to me, John, you're a genius. Now, I refute that. I'm not a genius. I was very fortunate to find out what I know. But I'll tell you this. Deep down, you know as much as me. The only difference is this. I am aware of what I know. I'm now passing on to you what I know, so you are now aware of it. But deep down, you know as much as me, but you're not aware of it. And that's the big difference. Which reminds me of Albert Einstein's quote, that if there's a problem, you can't use the same level of consciousness that got you there to get out of the issue or the problem. Precisely. One of the people I trained said, she said, you can't think your way into this, can you? And you can't think your way out of it. I said, no. <laughs> well, you know, this is interesting because you actually have to feel your way in and out of these things because that's where the negative energy is. It's in the emotions. See, early when I start talking to you, I said, what I've discovered, the whole of life is governed by our feelings. Everything we say, everything we do, every decision we make, all our attitudes are governed by our feelings. And our feelings come from identities. 
And that's why you have these negative situations. You say negative things. You do negative things. We picture ourselves in negative circumstances and in negative states, and that is who we believe ourselves to be. That's right. Well, we're not. You are perfect. You are perfect because you are energy. See, I am a philosopher, not a psychologist. Do you understand that? I do. I have never done any psychological training. I'm a philosopher. Okay? Yes. This work can change civilization, and it will eventually. But I'll tell you something on the downside. Mm -hmm. I cannot get any psychologist in Australia to listen to me. And I'll tell you why. It challenges their ego, and it challenges their status, and it challenges their hip pocket. Well, there, there's, a, there's an old saying about a philosopher not being appreciated in his own country. We know that. that, that. <laughs> yeah. You see, this is why now Fred Gallo, whom I contacted, and I sent him my book, and he read it, and he immediately got trained. I trained him. You see, yeah. the grass on the other side of the fence is always greener. You see, we don't have to be constrained. We don't have to be limited if we simply have that key that unlocks these emotions. And this is truly a golden key. It's quite, not, quite an analogy, but it's true. But once again, it's not me that's doing it. It's the work, the knowledge. And other people whom I've trained do exactly the same results as me. Okay. Now, I noticed, John, on your website that there are currently only two practitioners in the United States. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, we have 350 million people here. I think we need uh, uh, just a few more practitioners for the United States. Well, look, <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. But, I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day. Of course. Tell us you how see, people get trained in your work. How do they get into a seminar to, to learn your method of treatment? Well, the thing is uh, that um, you don't have to come to Perth, West Australia. All you've got to do is pick up the phone or get in touch with me on the Internet and have a session I've just given you. Now, that is the prerequisite. The client has got to have a session. Of course. So they'll end up being like you feel. And now I will train you. And other people, of course, can train you. I'll tell you something about training. The very, very, very first thing you do, if you want to get trained, we eliminate each and every problem you've ever had with learning. Now, I've had people come to me with PhDs and all kinds of degrees to learn this work, and I then get them to scan their life on the subject of learning, and it's amazing the crap they come up with in their formative years. Mm. It's been sitting there, impeding their ability to, to study. And if they do study, it's a, a big effort. It's so funny that you should say that because the minute that you mentioned learning, I immediately thought of my own struggle in the educational process. That's fascinating. Yeah, well, the thing is this, that, that I, mean, I mean, right now, if you've got time... Of course. Well, okay, close your eyes, please. They are closed. Now, learning... Undercut study. Yes. You, so you study to learn. Yes. Okay? So learning is the basic thing. Now, with your eyes closed, scan your life on the subject of learning. If anything uh, comes up, tell me. Absolutely. Got it. Good. Now, is it instant or personal? What have you thought about? I thought of something that was called the new math when I was in elementary school. That's all I need to know. Now, when you think about that, how does it make you feel? Dumb. Good. Now, just think what the word dumb means when you get a picture. When you get the picture, tell me. I got it. Good. Focus on it. When it stops growing, let me know. It stopped growing. Good. Well, focus on it again, and when it's gone completely, tell me. It's gone completely. Good. Open your eyes, please. Now, go yeah. back to the incident. How do you now feel about it? You feel dumb? No. I had, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Now, let me ask you do, you, do you feel that that sort of a memory linchpin is the, is, is the underlying paradigm that then has similar throughout the rest of life? Look, all your life, if you start to learn something, you're going to feel dumb. Yes, exactly. And, and then you've got to struggle to learn. That is and now gone. Now, in your work, when you, when you go to that linchpin, I call it, that, that seminal experience, 
Yeah. Does that then unlock your ability going forward when you go to learn? You don't have that impingement. You can actually learn without the effort or the fear. That's right. You just learn it. But see, maybe this uh, some other stuff. Now close your eyes, please. Before you know, now close your eyes. Okay, okay. they're closed. Now just handle this dumb thing. Now continue to scan your life on the subject of learning. Anything else come up? Uh, yes. Good. Yes. Now, what, that whatever you're thinking of, how does it make you feel? Rebellious. Good. Now just think what the word rebellious means, and you get an image. When you get the image, tell me. I got it. Good. Focus on it. When it stops growing, let me know. It stopped growing. Okay, now continue to focus on that, and when it's gone completely, tell me. It is gone completely. Good. Now go back to what you're thinking about. How do you now feel about it? I guess I feel, I want to say, I don't want to, it's not indifferent. I just feel clear, clear about it. Good, fine. Look, you're no longer stuck in that rebellious attitude. You exactly. look at that incident as a being without any problems. You look at it for what it is, okay? Yes. Good. Now close your eyes again, please. Okay. Continue to scan your entire life on the subject of learning. Yes. Good. Thought about something? I did. One, one okay. other instance. Yeah. Okay. How does that make you feel? It makes me question my judgment. Okay. So just questioning your judgment, just get an image to represent that feeling, and you get an image. When you get the image, tell me. Uh-huh. Uh, let me think here. Uh... Now just think what that means. Think about that incident. How do you feel? You know, it makes me self-doubt is how it makes me okay, feel. Okay, well, just think what self-doubt means in an image. Yes. Good. Now, focus on that image. When it stops growing, tell me. Stop growing. Good. Keep watching it. When it's gone completely, tell me. It's gone. Albert Einstein said that we can't solve our problems using the same level of consciousness that got us there in the first place. Thought-based tools like the MACE method allow us to see and handle our problems from a different level of consciousness. A Chinese curse goes, may you live in interesting times. Lucky for us, we have mentors like John Mace to help identify and eliminate the parts of life that... We've come to our final moments with the author of Don't Think of an Elephant and creator of the Mace Method, Dr. John Mace. In this last segment, we'll hear more about John's philosophy and the events that led to his interest in consciousness research. His 50 years of study in this field are described in his book, but if you listen to part one and two of my interview with John, you'll hear firsthand the fruits of his labor and the exact technique he uses both on clients and teaches to his students. Now here is the conclusion of today's program. Okay. You still feel any self-doubt? No. <laughs> it's gone. It seems gone, yes. Good. Okay, close your eyes again, please. Continue to scan your life on the subject of learning. Anything else popped up? Yes, I actually did. Okay, fine. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel diminished small okay, well just, just think what the word diminished means when you get an image when you got the image tell me diminished got an image I'm having a hard time with this well one, okay what would you draw to represent the word diminished got a picture now haven't you yes yeah we'll focus on that when it stops okay. showing tell me okay good now keep watching it when it's gone completely tell me okay it's gone good okay okay I'll ask you a question Close your eyes, please. Okay, they're closed. Concerning learning, what bugs you the most? Uh, Just put it this way. Con at this moment, con concerning learning, is anything that bugs you now? No, that's why I was Good. having a moment there, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, sh I should have asked a second question first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now when you think, of, got your eyes open, when you think about learning something new, how do you now feel? I feel uh, inquisitive. Good. It's positive. Yeah, uh, curious, I should say. But, but look, the thing is this. All extant knowledge, even what I'm doing, is available in my book. All extant knowledge is available if you know where to look. If you don't know where to look, ask someone. The book is Don't Think of an Elephant. Don't Think of an Elephant, which, of course, the minute you command that, people see either an African or, or the Indian elephant. You get an elephant. You get an elephant, exactly. That's right. And in your book, do you go through the different techniques that you use, or is it more the philosophy? No, the book, it was, it was printed uh, in England uh, a year ago. Mm -hmm. In that last year, I greatly refined it. Remember I said it was only a couple of weeks ago that I really finally put the, the nail in the coffin? Yes. So what's in that book 
is the, the old cumbersome way of doing it. And you get, it. you get there, it's very effective, but it works. It's not as efficient as what I'm doing with you. But in the book, there's a whole chapter on it. But there's also the philosophy behind it. The theory is all in the book. I see. Well, this, this is a book that's must read for anybody who's interested in energy psychology. This book has got to be on your bookshelf because this technology, I'll call it a technology because we're talking with energies that are so subtle that we don't even notice our pictures most of the time. We don't know what we're envisioning for ourselves. All we know is that we either feel poorly or, or we feel good. So, th that's how we react. That's right. And you need to know the mechanism that's underlying this. Well, so I put you through the mechanism, but then when you got the mechanism, I did all the shortcuts. So the work that we did is something that could take another person either as fast or perhaps... Oh, well, no, no. You see, what, I did, what I've done with you is a standard way to handle anybody who wants help. And that is what I've laid down with all the people I've trained. They do what I've just done with you. Okay? So I want to take you up on what you said about that, that technology. This is a technology. This is a scientific examination of life. And that's what it is. A scientific examination of life. One of the, the major influences in my life is the fact that I used to be a ship's captain. And as a ship's captain, I had to study magnetism in the, in the good old days of magnetic compasses. Uh -huh. And magnetism and electricity, the theory of, is what in, is involved in this work of mine. It's understanding those two things. So I just want to expand on that. The, the magnetic analogy is, is that we are like magnets with our mind, our thinking process. We are like magnets, except the magnet can't think. But we have a field of energy around us, the same as a magnet. And the Earth has a field of energy around it. So I use the, the knowledge of magnetic theory to explain a lot of the phenomena which we experience in life. I see. So, you know, that, that's what it's all about, really. And you had an epiphany, you said, two weeks ago. Well, you had one originally that brought you to a peak experience that led you on a path that has brought you to the point that you are now, 81 years, mm -hmm. and two weeks ago you had an insight that all that's left at this point for you is no more discovery of the theory, but rather now simply sharing. Is, is that correct? That's correct. I don't see... I mean, look, I've said... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me laughing, but I've said this to, to uh, people of my trains and colleagues over the years. I said, oh, I reckon that's it now, nothing would have write it. As soon as I say that, I have to write something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have, we, have, we have a caveat here. There may be more, but as far as you can see, you have pretty much mined the mind for as many diamonds as we need to create the wealth of experience that we want in our lives. Yeah, now let me take you back to the, the, how you felt when I sat you down and said, just think about how big you feel. See, that's the real you. And you, that real you is capable of anything. Yes, unlimited, that's essentially. Right. That applies to anybody and everybody. And of course, you know, you hear a lot of quantum physics talk, and, and, and this does really, truly seem to fall into that category that, if everything is energy, as Einstein discovered, then the only thing that we have to identify is how do we access not the negative energy, because that manifests in everyone's life quite easily. How do we get past that into the state where the, the flow is going in the direction that we want it to go? Well, I okay, go back to when you sat there, sat there with your eyes closed and you were feeling infinite in the dimension. That's the real view. Yes, exactly. And so you're saying that once we clear up these negative images, these identities that are impinging, holding us back, you're left with a completely different landscape. It is literally you open your eyes and you see the world a different way, a new way. That's right. Just as you are seeing it now. And that is my point, that this, is, this has been for me one of the most fascinating discussions because I have been studying... Eastern philosophy and meditation for a good 35 years. Uh -huh. And I am very familiar with many of the traditional concepts of Sartori and liberation. And while all of those things are very attractive at an intellectual level, at the visceral level of actually experiencing it, I can tell the listening audience that this is one of the most simple and lubricated experiences to get to that state of feeling 
clear that I have ever gone through. And I've, I've done a, quite a number of different techniques, I have to tell you, John. Yes, well, d don't think that I have that I have never tried either. I tr look, I spent 20 years trying everybody else's ideas. <laughs> right. Until I realized that they didn't have the answer what you knew was there. Mm. So I put them all in the drawer and started my own research. John's journey in consciousness exploration began with a sudden insight, out of the blue, that there is no such thing as time. This epiphany led him over the last 25 years to examine and study the mind and how it works. The insights he has gleaned have helped many people gain a sense of wellness and wholeness. His research has also led him to begin training others to do the work of helping humanity to regain the truth of our nature, that we are infinite beings. I believe that the MACE method is a technique that will help many to be freed from the illusions of self-created negative identities. I feel fortunate to have encountered John, and I am grateful that he is so willing to share his knowledge with anyone who is interested in bettering themselves. Please join us next Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, and thank you for joining us on our shared journey into wellness.